just find their style and they just push with that. Even though maybe MB Black is a stronger opponent, maybe they'll lose, but they need to find this is a league. They want to find their style, get better at it, maybe try something else and then get better at it. And maybe later in the league, maybe after after the half first half of the phase, they'll be winning. Who Could knows? be. I mean, look, this team doesn't look weak by any means, mm -hmm. but anybody looks weak when you look at a top-tier team that has multiple titles, one global title, multiple international tournament titles. Before we talk more about the rest of this series, we're going to take a quick commercial break before we see if Black is going to close us out 3-0. We'll see you all in just a few.
Welcome back, everybody. Here we have a 2-0 lead for MVP Black at the HGC Korea Day 2. Can Raven bring it back? It seems to be a very uphill battle right now for this new team. Uh, you know, filled with players that have Heroes Tournament experience, but just don't have the success uh, they that have the, the Black players I have. I feel like they have the potentials, and it's going to take some time. Like as was as we saw from Tempest, like Modern Life, he was a new he was a new player, and he was making some mistakes, and basically that somewhat cost him the game. Like we'll see something like that today. We see we see Joju and Ding Diong just as I mentioned before, just grabbing onto their hair, just carrying them into the game. Let's just please win just one game. I think they need some make they need to make some drafting changes. Also, in terms of macro, they need to look at the mini map. Just think about where the opponent team is and trying to try to figure that out. And also macro, at least to try to catch up to them. So uh, something I want to talk about. We're going to talk about more as we get deeper and deeper into this tournament. Uh, but we have a little bit of time before we go into this uh, this map choice. Oh, no, no, we don't actually. Um, well, it's going to be Sky Temple, and it is Raven who takes first pick. This is Black's choice. It could be a fast third game here. But um, every win matters because when you're tied in wins and losses, the difference, which I like to call indicator, is actually what determines whether or not you pass someone. So if two teams are 3-2, for example, but you actually went 3-0 in all your matches, they went 3-2 in all their matches, then you're ahead of them. So it's important for Black to win this 3-0 as much as they can. And even if Raven loses, to try to win as many games as they can. So this is kind of uh, what leads back at you saying like, please let's win just one game. It's not about just the pride, but actually every single map wins uh, or every map win is important and every map loss. If you lose 2-3, it's not as bad as losing 0-3. Yeah. So all of these things are important. Like we saw that we had a 3-0 game, 3-1 game, 3-2 game yesterday. We'll likely see, likely to be see seeing 3-0 game right now, but still, you never know, maybe H82 can, maybe he was hiding something, like he literally played Thrall and Earthquake and make some big moves in there, but we'll see what happens in the draft. I think they have it down. I think they're getting better at drafting against Black. They're learning as they go through it, and in that short of a time, maybe they have something other than, other than they had some, some eight minutes, nine minutes to think and give feedback. Looks like their communication was on point, so I'm sure they're going to improve within communicating and they can make some more plans. I would like to see them run Lee Ming again, run a snowball-y teamfight oriented composition, maybe even a Tyrael comp because of how good their coordination is so far. But they need to go global here again now that they uh, are first ban once more. Zeratul removed here. They don't want to deal with Kyocha Zeratul anymore. Zarya ban comes in. Sky Temple 100% false dead pick here. If they don't insta-lock it, Oh my god. This worries me. It's not a bad pick. But you give MVP Black Falstead! Both Tassadar and... On their map pick! They can also do this. Yep. They have, they have Tassadar so they can go around. And Raven... Okay, this is a fast draft. Okay, I'm so Raven liking has this a plan. already. Yeah, they Raven has a plan. plan. Yes. They have a plan. They... Obviously, it was intended to open Tassadar and basically... Black did take the bite and... With that Tassadar Vala, they were probably going to get Ariel with that, which is the right combo of Alario, what the Koreans would say. Okay, this starts to come together. This time, the uh, ETC ban makes a lot of sense. They're not going to take Karazim away from Meridu. We we're kind of talking about the potential of that, but with this draft, this is not really an option. You really get the power of taking ETC away, weakening this, forcing most likely the Meridian last pick here for Black. They will have the potential to switch it though. So the fastest drop had this tournament as Tychus Leeming get locked in. So two consistent AD and AP damage dealers. So it's going to be global versus team fighting here. Taunt is the name of the game right now. Raven will have the potential to get a Wombo with a Taunt into a Root into the Sulfuric Smash and all Leeming's abilities getting resets. And NMX gets his hero here, his Leeming. We're going to see Johanna come in for the auto attack blinds. Very good choice from Tist. I think he's going to be a very good frontliner standing on top. Not, not getting caught by that taunt also against Varian from that unstoppable force. So Yeah. We saw that a lot yesterday. Johanna used kind of as a soft counter to Varian because of that. 
uh, because obviously your tank is going to be in position as the most likely target to grab. Taunt has such a long or uh, short cooldown. But guys, can Raven bring it back, or will MVP Black get three more points on the board for their indicator score here in HGC Korea? We're going to find out right here, right now on Sky Temple. Welcome to Sky Temple. MVP Black's lineup. Sake on Falstad, Reset on Vala. Tist on Johanna, Kyocha on Tastar, and Merida on Karazium as Joju has a pause. It looks like Joju has some disconnection issues or anything regarding, of course, before the game starts. It's usually an audio issue. Generally speaking. Generally speaking, sometimes a keyboard and mouse, but those are... It's not like your leg is broken or you have a finger issue. Right, and that it, would be it, critical. It's basically, I would imagine, most likely the case here is he's got an issue with whatever software they're using for voice chat, and uh, that's probably pretty easily remedied. Joju actually to the bottom left of the screen right now in terms of positioning here. So it looks like everything is good, and we're going to go back into the game now. So no issues, and uh, I'll just have G Clef introduce the players <laughs> once we get in. Yeah, on the right side when they're ready. But MB Black looks, they look pretty warmed up and nice. Actually, Mary Day looks a little tired even. They were the last match to play yesterday and they had to come. Because Korea is an offline, all the players have to come at OGN. Wherever they live, if, even if they live like 100 miles away, they have to come to the studio. So for them to live in pretty far away, I believe in Incheon, which is about 30, 40 minutes away from Taxi. They had the last games of the last... And then let's go into Raven. Joju on Marfurian, Hamlin on Tychus, Animax on Leeming, Dion on Darion, and H H82 finally on Ragnaros instead of that Earth Canis. That's right. I'm pretty sure MVP Black is a little bit tired from going back and forth having the first match today. I I, I would have to agree with that sentiment. Um, Black's gonna have the faster rotation here. They split Valstad top, they went bot. It's the most efficient way to make sure that you don't actually get mega uh, blown up uh, and, and lose like really hard with his first trade. Test is obviously the best tool to have in mid here because he can blind, stop the push. There's nobody stopping the push in the bot lane right now and they don't have any global here. So they don't have Falstad, so. This is a big problem already because they're gonna, this is a faster rotation. They, they already lost the first wall, which means they have a they have the potential to lose that well the also, well. which is really critical for that second tempo. That's right, the second tempo well allows you to have basically two life bars, essentially. It's not quite that clear cut, but it's definitely almost as good as that. When you go for the second temple phase, the winner of that normally will take heroics first. They will get 10 first, depending on how the game goes, depending on how long that first temple is contested. There are exceptions, but as a general rule, that's what happens. And they are gonna get the well at one minute 20 in the game. It's already dead. See you later, goodbye. Uh, we're not gonna see it on screen. It's actually super important, but you guys, they left the bot lane because they killed the well. It is no longer there. It doesn't exist. It's also annoying for laning, but I mean, this is an insane accomplishment that only usually happens with Sergeant Hammer or Sylvanas. And uh, this is worrisome for Raven. Of course, MVP Black made the smarter choice to say go, go down from the beginning, and they had the right push for two minutes. Raven is will be okay for now, but later on when they have to fight for that second temple, of course, as you said, they'll be having a little bit of trouble, but they're contesting pretty well here, but they don't have a, but they have, so they didn't have a false stat in the fight, it was a 5v4. Well, now it's a 5v3 with false stat arriving a little bit late. That root not paired with anything here. MVP Black takes a significant lead and will actually double temple, which is, Usually only seen at the end of the game with a team wipe to finish the game. This is insanely rare. Mm -hmm. Test is making sure that it, our, that H82 here can't actually rotate to either. We're seeing the response coming in Hamlin coming up. Test actually getting very low, but he's got uh, Meriday nearby to heal him up. If and he also can, has Laws of Hope. If Young can taunt right, not enough Meriday will be, will survive that. 
And it, Raven, they're they're trying to push. They're make. They're. I feel like they're forced to make some decisions. They're they're making the they're making better decisions compared to game number two, of course. But still, in the long term, I think Black has the bigger picture in that sense, and Raven is only focusing right what's in front of them, like the trees in front of them, when Black is already looking at the forest. Yeah. With from a helicopter or something. Absolutely, they have the full picture. It feels like uh, Raven. I don't want to call them short-sighted, but there are some things that Black has j that just they just know mm -hmm. and it's in their blood. I guarantee you the split Falstad mid eventually sending Tist, uh, sorry Falstad top. I'll hold that thought. Uh, his reset actually gets caught here. Merida unable to heal him. Looks like he was on cooldown. Oh, look at those skill shots coming out from NMX. Look at oh, look at him playing on Lee Ming. He's on point. Just going back to my point, uh, before Raven had like a cool gank and interrupted me. Um, <laughs> the cool gank always interrupt. Like cool I ganks, do. man, always interrupted me. Uh, I'm like, it's gonna happen again. Look at this. <laughs> but uh, just to go back to my point, I'm pretty sure the rotation Johanna mid having false dead top the split to insta go bot because they wanted that. Well, all oh, rehearsed. I guarantee you, like not a word was spoken about this. Black has done this a million times. They knew it. They did it. Raven responded weaker. They don't have Falstad, of course, they don't have Global, so it's a little bit tougher to respond. But Black got so ahead just from that one little move. And uh, yeah, like like you said, the big picture, super important. And it, it's just something that I feel uh, a team with less experience and you know, a team that doesn't have the team house and a sister team is just going to be hard to replicate that type of play right now for Raven. They, they'll get there eventually, but they're just not there right now. Yeah, we, we, Raven, we actually have to talk about something. Let's go this way, let's go that way. I'm sure Black already knows that they are already going to win this map specifically, and all the other maps also, they have some kind of like A, plan A, plan B already planned. They just have to, let's go with plan A. Okay, and then everyone just follows like that. With Raven, I'm sure Raven also has plans, but not as much in terms of experience we're talking about. Sake is actually pushing under the uh, top four. Is he just going to solo kill H82? If he, had not, if he had not molten cord perfectly there, I think Sake can actually come back and try to look for a kill, but he decides not to because you actually go back to the same spot that you actually... Same health as well. Mm -hmm. He decides not to, uh, but he can actually turn this fight like crazy if they hit 10. They're not going to, unfortunately. For Sake, it looks like uh, H82 will hearth home. It's going to rotate down, but no healing well means everyone who gets poked and weakened here can't heal up. And in fact, they're just going to leave and try to get the pick on Sake. They fail to do so. What a and they're guy. chasing as well. They're going to lose EXP for this. Luckily, there's nothing to gain in mid. There's no wave there. So they're not actually really losing that much EXP. Maybe some bot EXP as Joju is killed mid. Saki is a barrel roll, gets out. <laughs> and let's just, Saki's just like, I'll just call it a day on Harthoma. It was a little bit scary there for me when I had low health. <laughs> that was good. Siyoung apparently had taunt right, right behind. No, almost had taunt, not yet. The but charge, still, the yeah. stun would have definitely caught him there if he had gotten caught. But still, MVP Black was out rotating there. Wouldn't they even have so much more sustain with have, by having that Tassadar? <laughs> throwing the heroics out there just to just to be safe, but Raven is nowhere close to this boss. This looks almost exactly as the same when they played against Tempest yesterday. They would, I think it was close to like the 11 minute game almost. It was just this over. Map, this map from goes the fast, you know. It just really does. Um, Raven got a top fort, which got them 10. And they actually are able to rotate down here to get into position in time to defend this boss. I don't think this will keep. They have so much range damage with Gleaming and Tychus to poke this down. Uh, plus, they had full ammo on both of these cannon towers. So I think that this is just going to be a dead boss before it even really does any damage to keep any real damage. Actually, it's like it might even die before it kills the well. It's going to be pretty close here. We're going to see a fight. Big Gust going off here. The boss will... Barely get the well, no! One more hit away. The boomerang not gonna hit that either. Black out what they wanted exactly. And Raven, they're actually doing so much better. I feel like well coordinated compared to game number one and two. They had the better draft compared to game number one and sure. two. And it's, it's just Black having such a lot more experience in that way, just macroing over Raven the entire time. Look, that was a quick snap decision to commit 
H82 to the top lane to get the fort. Well, they had vision of Black pushing heavily, uh, or rather Black on the boss to, to go for that push heavily. So they had they knew they couldn't contest. They got 10, and then they were able to quickly rotate back and defend their keep entirely. In fact, they're as you can see on the mini map, their healing wall just barely still survived. So they have that, which is not the biggest thing at this stage in the game, but it's something. The keeping untouched is super important. They absolutely can mount a comeback. This is going to be their biggest temple phase, though, because they're going to have to try to cut their losses here, down a talent tier, and the is forced in the bot lane to deal with these mercs. And it looks like Falstad, instead of trying to threaten, instead of trying to pressure, they're going to split and soak. They're trying to get a faster 16. They're going to steal this camp, try to push top. In fact, the keep wall is exposed now to these incoming mini waves, two of them, plus the bruiser camp. They already knew that entire Raven was going all the way down as Leeming was clearing the wave. They just this trade is going towards Black so much more than Raven. And Raven, this was like the only choice they can kind of make. They can even try to go for a fight, but that will be unlikely because they're still talent down. They need to hit that level 13, which they're really trying hard on, but still not yet. And MVP Black keeping this pressure on to the second, the you, first it, keep on top. In moments like this, if you don't have a global hero, you kind of just have to cut your losses and take some structure damage, which isn't enough to kill any structures, which means they don't get any extra EXP. There's just, like you said, there's, there's not anything else they could do, but if they had a global hero, they might be able to try to defend while soaking, then have that hero come back to defend the keep. They defend the keep regardless, but they don't get a whole lot of soak. They're finally on 13, but Black has half a keep down. The bot keep wall is gone. Dion is he out in no man's land. What is he doing? Here. I think he was way too aggressive there, but he's staying alive for now. But Tist is on, also on the front line. The entire team comes and Sake comes around from the side. He's going to do a lot of free damage. But the entire team of Raven just running away. They're split between the two. Maybe trying to do some damage on top. If this is a wipe, this could be game as Tist goes in, gets a big condemn. Will be killed here by NMX, though. He gets a reset. There's a big silence going off here as well, so it looks like this is not going to be the wipe that Black was looking for. NMX There's another, gets another kill. reset and another reset on Falstead. This will be NMX reset party here. And Mary Day having that palm, he does get back up with that palm at the end. But NMX is low on mana. Not going to survive the chase. I think reset has a good chance of surviving that. He's trying to get one more dash. He gets it. Very well played. NMX is out of mana. And actually, they should escape here. Very risky mount, but they're out of range. We will try to dismount Merry Day. Ooh, the split here means he doesn't have a dash. He's going to have to use a spirit. I don't know if he has one. Okay, gets that just barely that a reset. 